everybody, welcome back to Amuck Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a paperclip style chain. I've been doing a lot of these this summer and thought you might enjoy seeing the process. And this is going to be the old school process of making this chain. Uh, there are new tools available right now that make it a little bit quicker. Um, but we're going to use just some really basic tools. You just need a jeweler saw a way to make jump rings and I'm going to use these double ended round pliers for mine but you could use anything in your studio that gives you the shape and diameter that you want. These are just some dapping tools. Um, some round nose pliers and I'm going to do all of this with a butane torch. So let's get going and make a chain. Okay, I have all my links, my coils cut, and I ended up with 34 jump rings. So hopefully that'll be enough, but I'm gonna calculate. I went ahead and stretched two and soldered them together. And two links gives me one inch. So if I wanna do a 16 inch chain, I will need 32 links, so I think we're good. It gives us a couple of extras for mistakes, because that's always gonna happen. Um, but I'm again, I'm using 10 gauge half round wire, and I wrapped it around these little double ended, and I did the larger size, which is 3 8 in diameter. And it's given me a jump ring that is a half an inch outer diameter and three eighths inside. So now we need to solder all of them. So let's head to the soldering bench. Okay, I'm over the solder bench. I've got all my jump rings laid out in a row and I'm gonna warm them up first and then spritz them with my flux. I always have a lot of people ask what I'm spraying when I'm soldering and it's just liquid flux that's been put into this spray bottle. And I got this from Pepe Tools. It's part of their Bench Basics. Okay, let's get started. And I'm going to be stick soldering because I'm practicing my stick soldering right now. And I'm using hard solder. And something I like to do is mark tweezers with the type of solder that's in them. 
So we're gonna do hard solder on all these jump rings. Everything is soldered, and now we get to do the fun part. I'm going to take some round nose pliers, and I'm going to stretch these. And I like to stretch them so that our solder seam is going to be on the long side of the oval. This is also where we find out if we got a good solder join. There's bound to be a couple that pop. <laughs> so then I'm getting a nice little oval. It does take a little bit of force to, especially with this heavy of a gauge. If you're doing this for the first time, I would really recommend using a 12 or 14 gauge half round. When you have one that pops open, because you will, <laughs> don't worry. You can just kind of bend it back. In. Hi, Victor. You can bend it back into shape. 
And since you have to cut half of these open again anyway, that's all right. It's already open for you. So it needs a little more work, but you can see we'll just bend it right back into shape. I've separated these into two piles. I'm going to throw half of them in the pickle and clean them up, and then I will cut the solder seam back open again. Okay, now that I have half of them open and half closed, I can take two of the closed rings and hook them to one of the opens. And then we'll solder them in little groups of three like this. And then here you can see why I like to have the solder seam on the long end. That way I can lay it out on the solder block, spread like this, and not worry about the solder connecting the two links back together. Although that can happen sometimes, but usually you can kind of just go in there and heat it up a little bit, and with your solder pick, pull them apart real quickly. So I'm going to go through and connect these all into groups of three now. Okay, I have my groups of three laid out. I've got the seams that I want to re-solder facing up. And I'm just going to be real specific with the flux and use the little eyedropper. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on there. This one I did not get in the center like I like, so I'm going to have to watch that one. We had enough solder on that one. I'll reshape it. Okay. okay, so all but one, and I'm not sure that that had enough solder on that seam, so I'll go back and straighten it up and we'll reflux it. I've gone back to the bench and I've now joined those links of three with another one of our open links. 
So I'll go through and solder those now. Again, we're just going to squeeze a little bit of flux onto that one link we want to rejoin. with that one. Okay. That one just needs to be reshaped a little bit. do that and be right back. Okay. Let's try that one again. It might not have had enough solder so we'll keep that next to us. go. We just keep continue joining the links together. And you can see, once you get the links made and soldered, it moves along pretty fast. It's very satisfying. Okay, now we've got one more small set of links, and we will connect it to these two longer ones. Now it just gets tricky to see where your last couple <laughs> of solders are. Let's see, right here, I've lined them up next to each other. Got it. I'm going to throw it in the pickle pot. All right, here it is out of the pickle. It feels really good. It's a nice weight. That um, 10 gauge makes a hefty little chain. Very satisfying project. I hope you all will make one and let me know how you do. Again, you might start with a 12 or 14 half round to start with. Um, I like, I've been making a lot of these this year, but I tend to use square wire, which gives a really neat look. This was one of the pieces I did this summer. And it has a few little complications just because when you're coiling the square wire sometimes it wants to rotate so it's hard to keep it straight um, but if you'd want to try the square wire I will just take sections and then hammer it out make sure I'm starting with a nice straight piece of wire um, but if you have any questions about this feel free to ask I'm happy to help I'm gonna go back now with the little pumice wheel and just hit all the solder seams and clean those up a little bit and then I'm gonna throw it in the tumbler. Unfortunately this was all the half round wire I had so I'm gonna have to order some more so I can make a clasp. <laughs>
but very fun project and I hope you give it a try.